you this afternoon. Lord, as we ask at this time, Lord, that look upon, Lord, this little meeting we're having together, Lord, that we may all come, Lord, to see what you would have in your word and the things that are taking place in the hour that we live in. So I ask it now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. So there's quite a few controversies, and Gary passed me this book here, and there too he compiles a whole lot of things about that Brother Branham plagiarized some things, and also how Brother Branham said some false things or didn't say the same things, the, the same, you know, the same in, in other places, and even about healing. So I'm just going to talk in general to start with concerning those things. Um, one thing that these controversies speaking against God's prophet and God's apostle, the generation that live in their day are not really being deceived by these things here. The people of that generation is pretty well gone, especially in the days of Brother Branham. Now, I don't know how much many of you have heard the things that was preaching Brother Branham's day, but it's one thing to read it on, let's say if you have a text, than hearing the actual word that has the anointing on it. That causes a more impression, if you want to. That's why in, if you want, it's not, uh, as a whole, the generation, even if it was partway through Brother Branham's, these things that are coming up that's on the internet now, most, most of them are not deceived by that because they heard the original. And so Satan knows that most of those that would be witness to what they heard, they're either gone or they're in a sm small minority. And so therefore Satan takes advantage for the young generation that's on ground now. Now I'm not saying finding fault with them in the sense that, well, you know, they're all, no, it's the condition that's there in the younger generation. And so they were a bit like you and I when we want to hear something and something might catch their mind. But unless you, you're, actually you have to be born again to, to see the, the things that was preached, then upon those things, then, then you have a place to start or to grow from. But today, it's so easy someone to go on the internet and say, well, here's a dual space statements, these prophecies didn't work out, whatnot. And it's so easy to take a phone, a tablet, or a computer and check, okay, there's this set over here, and then, and if you can get all the, if you want to where all the sermons are at, bingo, you can do it text-wise. Oh yes, there it, it looks, it, it did say different things. But that's what Satan is using to deceive young people. If they would take the time, and I know it's, it's sad in one way because if you listen to a sermon of Brother Bram, you're looking at two or three hours. I mean, they have a hard time now for an hour. And it's not faulting in that way, it's just the, the way the generation is. So as they text these things, they look, and then Satan puts in their mind, well, maybe th that Brother Brown was a false prophet or, or not what he thought it was, or Brother Jackson, because they're bringing things about Brother Jackson as well. And so as they l go down that road, the other thing that comes to mind in a young generation, well, if that's all false, and uh, my parents are kind of old fogies, they, you know, they wear dresses, they dress, go to church properly, well, maybe I can wear slacks, maybe I can wear shorts, I mean, if he's saying false, then probably the whole thing is false. So that's the mindset that Satan is pushing on the younger generation, unless you get a solid foundation. But on the other hand, God knows who he's gonna call. And all, not all, but 
I know a lot of families are being affected this, even ours. And so what do you do? Well, I'll, you can still love them. <laughs> you still love them. They're still your children. And you can, we can pray for them. But as we pray for them, now remember, it's God that determines who's who. Uh, you take, to give an example, I don't mean to put it that extreme, but like Brother Branham had children. None of the children has moved on. Now, I'm not taking their salvation. They may be white robes or whatever the case may be. But there definitely can't be bride that God has moved light so far down the road that it's almost impossible. I know that you have all the texts that I sent you, but just to, to give you a little bit of background how I'm looking at these things, is they say, well, Brother Branham said this over here in that time, and then he said it a little different over there. They're just looking for the excuse to find error so they can to get away to live an easier life going to in the world. But on the other hand, now, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for Brother Branham. I remember having some dream way back in 2010 and even in 2009, uh, 1990s, if you want to. And if I had not wrote it down, and I said it maybe in a Bible study there, I was using that example. And you asked me the question how to quote that today. If I didn't read it, I may not quote exactly as it is. I have an overview of it, but not the exact details. And so therefore, God allows man, men to be men, and even prophets. You take like John the Baptist. He says, here behold comes the Lamb, Lamb, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was so adamant right there. Then a period of time goes by where he exposed Herod was living in adultery, and so therefore he's in prison. Then while in prison, he tells some of his disciples, do you want to go see and ask see if Jesus is really the, is the Messiah? Yet what he said under the anointing was direct. And so God can cause certain things to change in, in that sense. But because he said that, does that make him a false prophet? No. You take the apostle Paul says, I wish that they would all marry me. Then later on he says, well, no, not all. I mean, you find the scriptures yourself. So there's things we need to look at when you're looking at all these statements that you've, the information you've got, how they, they compare the dual statements. This is just mine that has an itch to show that it's false, because in behind it, I don't want to fo really follow that. I, I want to be saved, but I don't want to follow what God's actually doing. All right? So then you get into what's called plagiarizing, because one of the information I passed you, the, uh, the information I got concerning what Clarence Larkin said and what Brother Branham said, uh, I didn't bring that up myself. There was a, was done in the days that the brand of Moon was on. There was characters doing the same thing in that hour. And so therefore, they put the evidence concerning whether Brother Branham plagiarized uh, Clarence Larkin. And if you're going down that road, yeah, you can look all the search things here and then trying to figure things all out. The easiest thing to do, if they go saying that Brother Bram plagiarized Clarence Larkin and Ru Charles Russell, then I can say by the same note that you guys could say the same thing here, but you'd be biblically wrong. Martha and Luther plagiarized what the Apostle Paul talked about faith. What? A question? Oh. Right, that's right, but what some of them have put down they're saying, they're just using, Brother Branham said this, Clarence Larkin said this, so he plagiarized. Without action, and I believe most of those that are writing these stories, whether this guy or some of the others, did they actually listen to the actual sermons themselves? And if you're looking for a sermon, it's just like even what's happening today. Are you looking and hearing, looking at a sermon to find fault? Or are you looking to find truth? And not every man, 
men are, no, are still men, they still can make mistakes, and God knows I probably made some, and actually one time here in a service, I had, was preaching something, especially when you're doing something a little bit complex a bit, that your mind is there, but then you, there's thoughts coming, and so I said something that wasn't right. So somebody came out and said, Brother Fred, that's not right. Uh, that was for the service. And so my daughter heard, and she came out. Uh, I said, well, no, I don't think I said that. And my daughter says, yes, you did. And sure enough, I went on the video, and I said, oh, yeah, I guess I did. But it was not deliberate. Some, I mean, it depends. If you're recalling something, and that's, especially if you're recalling a certain event or a thought, as you're speaking here, this is kind of like coming in the background, and you want to fit it in. And sometimes you may quote the wrong person and whatnot. Like Brother Ray says, God allow me to make enough mistake to get the job done. Amen. So, uh, yeah, so in, in that respect. But in the ones that the, um, John Collins is doing, he's going beyond that. So their outlook is proving that Brother Branham was a false prophet or an antichrist. And if they ever heard the original sermon, because these new characters are coming up, they came up, most of them, well, one of them did was in the days of Brother Brown, but he had a, I think you read his story, so I don't want to say it. Well, he was into uh, uh, adultery or looking at porn. He lost his mind. He went to jail and so forth and so forth in uh, that he was a troubled person. But he, his father, as in relative, was also... Uh, and I don't know if it's his father, I, now this I do not know, but somewhere was in the ministry in Brother Branham's day. He was at the tabernacle. So this young man, that's called, well, it's not a young man now, John Collins, that's doing the same thing. Um, I don't know if you heard this part here, but it's not on the message I sent there, but there was, it was brought to my attention that Brother Jackson wasn't that honest as everybody thought. And so it was told, I remember the time that there was a problem in the church, in Brother Jackson's church. The deacons that were there, there was a schmozzle taking place, so Brother Jackson got rid of the deacon board that was there, and they, not he, they elected other deacons. And so what was told to me is, is well, the, the reason Brother uh, Jackson said that is because later on he took a million dollars for himself. Right, okay. Then later on, in another instant before he died, he took three million dollars for him and his family. And I told that person, look, I says, I have a hard time believing that. Because in 1977, Brother Jackson asked me to go to Montreal with him. He couldn't speak French. So he wanted me to interpret for him. And so at the, uh, now I'm not going to say what he said in the sermon tomorrow. So at the end of, of the convention, this brother is a French brother from Haiti's background and he just speaks French. So he says, can you tell Brother Jackson we brought an offering for him? And he says, yeah, I can tell Brother Jackson. So I tell Brother Jackson, Brother Jackson, he says, they brought an offering for you. It's for you coming here and they appreciate it. Brother Jackson tells me to tell him. Now remember, I'm the interpreter. It's not getting second hand here. So I, so I says, Brother, Marcia, Brother Jackson, you keep the money and you need it more than I do because everything's taken care of on my end. Now, a man like that goes and steals $3 million. That's somebody that wants to get, that's been hurt and wants to get back. That usually that's what happens. That's what happened with this John Collins. He got burnt for some th things which I don't want to get involved in. And so he's lashing out at the movement and using technology. Now he, he's, he's a, somewhat of in technology because he runs a site. Isn't that right, Paul? I don't know if, it, if he is a technical background. I mean, anyway, so he uses that medium to go out and see and put out his version of what's wrong, of all the quotes and the misquotes and whatnot. And they use this example over there, what happened should have happened here and didn't happen over there. 
Well, had you been, let's say, put yourself in Brother Branham's shoes. How many meetings would he have in a week? How many places did he go in a year? Now, if he says something a year or two in the past, unless you've got a photographic mind, you may not sell, tell the same words that you did back there. But in the overall picture, he's seen something and trying to relate there. Even for myself, there's things that I, well, way back. This was in uh, 2001. Huh? 2011, sorry. Yeah. There we go, see? Make mistakes, right? <laughs> Can't read. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, so in 2011, Brother Jackson came to me in a dream. And he came to the East Coast. He was busy with things going on. And I said to myself, if I get a chance to talk to him, this is in the dream now. I would like to talk to him about the situation that's going on this time. No sooner that I said that, I was about to ask him about the 70 weeks, uh, sorry, about the uh, weeks of Daniel and Hosea. And before I could answer the question, in the dream he says, I know the controversy, and you go preach what you receive, then the dream ended. There was uh, other dreams that happened in that way there too. In other words, if I was to quote that without reading it, because it was in 2011, hey, I'm old now, 75, so I won't remember every detail, but I can remember the gist of it. Now, if I went and said something and somebody had, oh, I heard you record through this, and now you're saying that, it, you, you, you must, it's your fault. I mean, that's really what the basic of most of these things are about. Um, I, well, in, it's easier, in the easier things we ought to. Now, how many have seen about the, the uh, in Sunset Mountain about the cloud? Okay. In, now I've got to move the laptop so I can see the cloud. There was, at the time, a Dr. McDonald he has a doctorate degree in meteorology. Now he just got it from the pictures, so he, I mean, you can, you've read this before? No, yes? Okay, well anyway. Anyway, so he, uh, he's discussing this from the pictures that he got. Using the basic of trigonometry and calculation, he made a startling discovery that the cloud was at least 26 miles high and 30 miles across. Okay, that's, that's pretty big. And a lot higher and bigger than he says uh, than that cloud should be. The circle was too high to be made by a jet plane, as Dr. McDonald was determined, that there was no rockets or rocket planes or bomb being tested near by that day. Now that's what he said. This John Collins, or I forget which one, or this other guy in the book here, he says, oh no, it's just been declassified that that NASA, not NASA, but the military had fired a rocket and had blew up in the atmosphere and that's what drifted over there. Now you have two accounts. Well, to go prove something like that because there's no direct evidence that's probably still living back there. And so they can get away trying to show a false picture. How many remember in 1986 the shuttle Columbia when it blew up? That's bigger than any, than any missile that some, than the United States could fire in the air as a, a, a ballistic missile to counter some other rockets, whatever the case may be. When this thing blew up, it didn't make a cloud 30 miles wide. Now, granted, when it blows up, it has to disperse. If this thing's only dispersed maybe about three, four miles, that's about it. So in one Okay, you're saying that it was that rocket back then, it came from uh, California and it drifted over the mountain and it got that big. Well, unless you have direct evidence, they're just using that as a 
something to make Brother Branham false about what he said concerning the cloud. Now in one place he says, well, Brother Branham said in one place there was five, five angels came to him, and another place he said, well, there were seven angels come to him. Now that was later on when he started talking about these things. I mean, just like myself, is trying to record an event that you might have spoke years before, and you're not quoting it just exact. He's still a man. He's, although he's a prophet, he's not God. But the teachings that he taught is accurate when it comes, if you listen to his whole sermon. Now, there's other things that were... I don't know, some might have had the picture, might not have had it, or... This is Clarence Larkin's depicting of the church ages here. Do you want, can, I want me to blow that up a bit there? Bigger? There? That's enough, okay. He puts, yes, anybody could read their seven church ages. Hey, you go to the book of Revelation, you can read it there. It's not that saying that, there's, that Clarence Larkin was the first, had taken and spoken about those church ages, but it's what he said about it, that Brother Bram did not plagiarize. Just because Brother Bram talked about seven church, uh, sorry, seven church ages, not six. Hey, there we go, hey, make mistakes, hey? Well, I'm not used to this, this is a little different. <laughs> so in the seven churches, now he puts the seven churches, yes, before the rapture. But once the rapture takes place, Clarence Larkin puts the seal in the week of Daniel. Now, if Brother Branham had actually plagiarized what Clarence Larkin said, he would have said, all these seals are in the week of Daniel. Well, these guys putting these things out in these books, do you think we're idiots? You can read the Bible, too. But we're not looking for that point of view. We're looking at the revelation that comes with the word of God. And there's a whole lot of other things that he spoke about Clarence Larkin in that day or that hour that was wrong that we can see. And now they don't put that in their books, though. Okay, Charles, uh, Charles Russell, not Clarence Larkin now. Clarence Larkin and Charles Russell pretty well live in the same period of time, from the 18, don't quote me as a, a quote, 1890 to uh, 1924, one of them was. So they live in that period of time. Prior to that period of time, Men in the past looked also in the church ages and in the seals. But not too many of them was drawing, doing drawings then. Because technology has not, I mean, you talk about technology. Clarence Larkin was a draftsman. So he would make nice charts. And it's true, when you get something complicated, you need something, a picture to follow the thought through. If I'm just, or if they be just preaching on just, just shall live by faith, you don't need a chart. You can read scriptures and you're in a concentrated, simple thought. But if you're looking time, then those things are not as simple, though that's why I use a lot of charts when I do. Now, as my charts 100%, as much as I understand God has brought in this hour, and some of the things that I've come across in the last year or two, actually some things I found in Brother Branham's sermon when he preached. He says, after the bride's gone up, he says, that's when Jesus goes to speak to the souls under the altar. Not from 1945, but yet Brother Brown used 1945 as a springboard, aren't you, for where the Jews were coming from. And then in the days of Brother Jackson, well, well maybe it was World War II that someone would live long enough and then uh, the end would come. Well, in his day, looking that way, it could be, it could it was plausible to be so. If God doesn't open it up, if God had given everything to those two men, you wouldn't need me as a preacher. you just listen to those sermons and you would have everything. But God moves on in, in time in Revelation. So when, as I was directed that, and then I, I felt 
I was looking at that, well, <laughs> there's something wrong. You can't be, and I know some were saying, well, maybe if they live long enough that that generation, they might be one left that might be 107 years old, whatever the case may be. Well, so, well, well what's the point of them being in a wheelchair in the, in, in, or if they're in the, in the on a fence, what's that in, the, in English? Uh, lost their, they can't remember much. <laughs> okay. Well, that one, that was not a testament to the, not one or maybe a, you know, a half a dozen people that could be, still be living. So that couldn't be right. Then as, as that was on my mind, then I said, well, I'll take a break, go listen. And just, well, I don't think it was just by accident. Go, I just happened to pick up the one on the, on the fifth seal. And when I heard him say, it's after the bride's gone home in the rapture, that's when Jesus comes down and speak to them, and it's a little season of time that their fellow brethren will be killed. Well, it's going to be in the week. Well, if you go to three and a half years, go on after that, the Antichrist goes after them. So that fit, I said, that fit. There's something about the Spirit of God that when you see a picture, that, that's the truth. And so the little season part, which I attribute to Brother Jackson, when he preached times and seasons, he says, Times is centuries, seasons is decades. Well, that fit it right in there. Although Brother Jackson said from 1945 to when somebody, you gotta move with the revelation of God. God, you have to allow a man of God to speak certain things, not going to direct error. And, there's, and I spent it this way. Brother Jackson said more things right than he ever said, any dual statement or anything like that. All right. So in Charles Russell, the messengers to each age, if, he was, if Brother Brown was plagiarizing them, well, anybody can read a Bible know that the Apostle Paul was the Apostle of the Gentile for that first church age. But then Russell puts the Apostle John to the second age, then Arrhenius as the third, then Peter Waldo, I don't know who he is, was supplant, supplant, or that information was uh, more or less reinforced by John Wycliffe at the time. Then he goes on to the, yeah, at least he had Martin Luther. Well, no. Yeah. Had Martin Luther for one of them. And then the Philadelphia, he put William Penn. No, that wasn't William Penn. They were men that were writers, more than one. Then he puts the seven church age Message as being himself. Now I have a picture too that shows this is what he chose at the time. At the church age, one, two, three, four, five, six, and there he is in the seventh. Now Charles Russell is, he didn't start per se the Jehovah Witness, but from the Jehovah Witness got a lot of the teaching from him because it was different ideas being split. Well, a lot of reason that there was a lot of divisions at the time that Russell was preaching some of these things, he preached, oh yeah, it's in, in another church here too. Charles Russell believed that in 1914 was the end of the world. Um, where are we living in? Are we in suspension somewhere? I mean, I don't mean to put it as a joke. And now to say Brother Branham plagiarized Russell. Just because Brother Branham said there was six, seven church ages and there's seven seals, the Bible says it, and bingo, it's not plagiarizing. If God didn't want his word, it's, not, it's to be to whosoever will, not plagiarize to, some, to someone that has the first revelation of it. All right. Now, being those things there, I can drop down to, let's see if I got it in this area here. Uh, you probably, I don't know if you have this or I, I sent it to you at the time. There's 16 pages. Now, if I was to explain everything in there of those 16 pages, you'd be here a long time. Yeah, here we go. This is from Wikipedia Encyclopedia. They're not religiously biased. 
So Wikipedia and Encyclopedia is different men that writes in and to confirm the facts. Are they 100% accurate? Well, pretty close, but anyway, so. So that there's numer numerous interpreters through the centuries has adopted the viewpoint of the seventh church of Revelation and two, three represent several distinct periods of church history. Now, the first ones, if you want to, of any significance was, oh, it's going to be further down. Oh, well, here's some of them. Okay, Schofield. We all have a Schofield Bible, right? Schofield got a lot of things from Clarence Larkin or Russell, anyway, to begin with. So, the Scots reference, yeah, so some of them are somewhat close. Uh, of course, Clarence Larkin, that's, he died then. There was a Merrill Unger in 1890-1980. In and, of course, they talk about Brother Branham. But then the extreme Franciscan, way back in 1200 AD, they started looking at those things. So did Clarence Larkin copyright them? It's not, that's the wrong thing to say. They could probably look at some of the things that they said back then. Then you have other men like Thomas uh, Brigham in 1557 to 1607. Then you have, you have this here too? This information? No, we don't know. I didn't look. But now you're looking now anyway. I'm not putting you on the fire. I just want to know. I don't remember because I did update to some of these things as I was finding things. And so therefore you have Schofield, yeah. Then in uh, Holland in, in 1603 to 1669. If you want to just go to the Wikipedia and put in who talked about the church ages or the seals. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can look in Wikipedia, which is secular, and look at what took place. Like, they, Wikipedia only goes into a certain part of what those men might have said. So they only get it from a record of a record, if you want to, and they put it in there. Now, the way Wikipedia is being corrected, uh, if you are a person that has been updating things with them and you find accurate, then you're like a, I don't know, like a scribe for Wikipedia. It depends if you're looking at what the information, what they were doing for details. The scribes that, how it works, that goes into uh, Wikipedia, you have some that may be from the Baptist faith, you can have some from a different faith. And so therefore, as they're getting together, like I said, as a whole, they'll bring a certain point, and well, the history point when, it, when those men lived, uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty well clear. What they taught and what every, every detail, well, even if you, you bring in other things, they're not even close to what Brother Bram said. So to use Wikipedia, I'm just using Wikipedia to show that not just Clarence Larkin, not just Charles Russell had been looking at in the past about the church ages and the seals, well, whether some did look at the seals or whether they did or didn't. They're look, they had been looking at certain things in the scripture in the past only to the amount of information that they can look in their day. And there too, when you look at the information in their day, you can only look at a revelation when events are on ground that you can look at it. If you take like World War II, the Jews slain under Hitler, well, they couldn't know that way back there. None of them, till the events is on ground. And the World War, well, you take uh, Russell and Clarence Larkin, well, the millennium has started, and the other one said, well, the Lord has come in 1914. Now remember, that war, World War I, started in 1914. I think they should have kept their mouth shut and waited for a year to find out what's going on. I'm, I'm only at level between the lines here. Now what I'm trying to say, looking at the situation, I'm looking back there, well, there's no way we know about what God has done in this hour that they're not even close. Now, Clarence Larkin was a Trinitarian. Russell was halfway between, he was not oneness and he was not Trinitarian, so he's kind of, what his doctrine was, well, yes, uh, Jesus, God was in Christ, 
but he only received his divinity when he went up in the when he was raptured back to heaven. He wasn't divine prior to that time. So I mean, they only looked at things. Well, according to the scripture, it, had it been the time, if God doesn't open up a scripture by an inspiration, then men can read the scriptures, but you can only look it up to a certain point. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so. That's part of some of the things that are there. Now, there's a scripture which is a dangerous point and those that goes into error may not realize it. In Psalms 105.15 saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. How do you harm a prophet? By trying to bring things showing she's a false prophet. Now, saying all those things, don't write all those people off. Although they may be saying that, till the seven seals broke, Granted, it's not, they're not going to wait, God's not going to wait till the last hour. Hey, you need to get all this thing in place. So there's still time for some to wake up. And what's, we're in a, if this Israel is getting ready for a spiritual warfare right now, a warfare to take her land, she's going to take her land. The bride is in a spiritual warfare for our land, which is this. Do we know everything yet? Not. There may be. If God reserves something for the time till he actually breaks the seal. So as we're moving in that time frame, nearing where God's going to, we're involved in a miracle war, that's why he talks about in Matthew chapter uh, 13, talks about that he'll send his angel to remove everything that offends and commits iniquity against the revelated word, not how you live, it meant concerning the word of God. And so therefore in that, in that context, as we are moving towards the sevenfold light, and there's a lot of Jackson Church don't believe in the sevenfold light. Do we have everything, every detail about sevenfold light? We're living in that period of time. We're not limiting, saying, hey, we got everything. Now, no, there's still some things, but we have a whole lot more light than from the day of the Brother Bram or the day of the Brother Jackson. And that's the time we're living in. But when it comes a time for that miracle war for Israel, now this is just me, it's not the Lord didn't say it, there'll probably come an anointing to get this bride to gel together. And in order to walk into that period of time, it's not the preacher that's going to have the nine spiritual gifts. I would, I'm longing for the day to see that spiritual gift in operation in the body. So you have your work cut out, right? Oh, good. No, but I mean, we'll need those things there when the time comes, whether it's for healing or take place or whether it's a prophecy about some danger, some things that are coming up, or false things that are, are floating out there. And surely there is a lot of that taking place now. The other thing that I just heard this week is, I knew things were coming close. We are living at a time where America has to be a place prepared before the week of Daniel begins. It means Canada as well, if you want to. And so therefore, I, on my part, I believe the vision that George Washington had, that there'd be three wars on America, the one he was involved in, the, uh, the, war, the, the war, the second one is the, uh, indep uh, the uh, slavery and so forth back then, but there's the third one, and the third one would be the worst. Now, Brother Branham had a vision about that, and then some of them in this, I think maybe in this book, say, oh, that never happened. California never went under. He didn't say when. 
Now, he, did, he relayed it somewhere. Then he says, talk to his son. He says, it'll be before you're an old man or die. Well, that's him saying things. Like he says, in his day, he felt, well, the end would come. He felt, as a, pers- as a man, he says, by 1977, these things should be fulfilled. They, these critters, uh, sorry, I shouldn't put it that way. These men that say that, they just jump on that with both feet. Now, as we're moving now, I've been watching what's taking place in America. And the two parties are so against one another. They're trying to get Trump to put him in jail to stop, and on the other hand, it, and they're playing favorites, like they don't touch uh, Biden's son, they don't touch Hillary, and all those other things there. It's like a dual standard. And so there was a man that came that got shot, but he was calling, let's grab arms and let's go after that, the headship of the FBI and clean house. As that mentality is there, all you're going to need is a spark or two, and you could have the Civil War. No, don't worry about another election. And if there's a Civil War, you have the right and the left. Those that are of the Democrat side, they want the LBGQ, they want all kinds of perversion and whatnot, they, uh, uh, they want abortion and everything else. And, it's, and America is supposed to be um, a place where God had reserved for, for uh, America to come to be a, a country. But it's so corrupt that God has to clean house. And in cleaning house, Yes, it would be nice if it was going to go peaceful, but I got my doubts it's going to go peaceful. Well, that's how far up the road, Brother Fred? I don't know. It could be this year or in the next two, three years. Because when that miracle war happens, around that time, America will have to go through that war, a civil war in her land. Now, I know they talk about a dark cloud, but depends on what you look at. Like the angel didn't tell uh, Washington, this is where the cloud is. So it's something dark that would come upon America. And so if once that takes place, and we don't want to see that, and there probably will be repercussions here in Canada too. As the, they're borrowing money beyond their means and things are getting kind of crazy, here in Canada, all it would take to really cause an uprise, stop the old age check. Stop these, we got no money to give to, to the natives or the different groups. That would be like a match for Canada. And the states, well, they're kind of, well, I don't know how much he was falling in the news, maybe. I, I listened to CNN for just two minutes and said, ugh. <laughs> and you can see the, uh, and the rich people that are pushing that agenda of the, of the woke system, the LGBTQ system, the, all those other corrupt things that's against God, they, they have the money trying to oppress the other ones. They even control, like, YouTube, Twitter, what they don't want, they suppress. There's, there's not free speech. So you look at the world. So there are other things like one agency. Now, don't go there and say, Brother Fred, this don't be trusted. But there's called uh, Project Veritas. Their mission is they don't care what side of you're on, but they, tr- they try to bring it as straight as what is really taking place. Here I am talking politics. Uh, forgive me, Lord. <laughs> anyway, so. That's the uh, one side of it. Um, there are some sites that you can go look. Now, the, like I said, the, uh, the place, is, okay, that's about Clarence Larkin, yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, it's not just in Norway. It's affecting young people in the different realms of the Jackson movement as well. I mean, I'm being affected as well, too. And from what I hear tell is, 
well, don't talk about this to your parents. But you, you have more fresher truth. And if you, if you want to look at the telltale signs, look at their lifestyle. It's the women start putting pantsuits, shorts, going to places really that I know if Brother Jim Crother was preaching today, th their ears would be burning. All right? I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, and, and uh, I'm of the opinion too, they say someone comes into the door and well, it starts to want to listen to the message and they may have an old pantsuit for a woman or a man has a, well, forbid he don't have a muscle t-shirt, but well, I mean, you know what I mean, not quite, then I, of the opinion that allow time that God to speak to them. Because they'll, if they are of God, they will change. If they're not, they'll feel uncomfortable and they'll leave. Now, if they create a fuss, that's different. And yeah, who's ever ministering will have to uh, address it. But yes, it's not just here. I've heard uh, Brother uh, Dennis Bailey reading for us some of the things he was saying in sermon. You could see it was being affected in that assembly, not those that go to the church, but probably in their offspring or people they know or their relatives. Instead of coming to the Lord, they, they've gone into this thing about Brother Ryan was a false prophet. And so, yes, it's not just there. It can be people even that we don't know that might be listening in and their children are picking this up. The, see, what's the deceiving things? The new generation are so high tech that they can go look at everything. That's written down by someone compared to what someone else said. And if it's convincing enough, they'll, they'll believe that junk without actually going to the source that they're claiming to be wrong. So, yes, so sister, it's not just in, I believe it's not just Norway. Yes. Well, Why? okay, they're calling us a cult because while well, the things that we brought, see, we're associated with, with things of Brother Branham and Brother Jackson. So we're just going on the furtherance. And what's happening in some places, they're saying that we're in error or in false doctrine. Or some church will say, well, they have a revelation every day. That tells me that attitude somewhere is wrong. There's still time for them to straighten up, but if they don't, it looks bad. And so if they're, they're calling us a cult because, uh, well, especially uh, those that are kind of quaint in the la latter years that we're living here in this third watch, they don't believe we got the two days right. They're saying we got to pick. We picked a date. Oh, it's 2027 and 2028, when the week of Daniel begins or the rapture goes up. And so they look at that and they hear other sources saying, "Well, that's all false." So therefore, that's why they would call us or brand us in that as being in a cult. But the thing is, God has allowing this for the time period because it's just like in the days of Jesus. When he told his disciples, when you see the when there's you're being pushed to the if you want to uh, when that not one stone shall be left upon another, or in that period of time, uh, it says don't. Well, it's in uh, Matthew 24, I believe. Let him that is in the that's in the city flee to the mountain and so forth. Heed the warning. Your life will be spared. The others won't be spared. Well, it's the same thing that's coming down the road now. If this generation don't hear the, heed the warning, when that seventh seal is broke, that's going to be real bad. And where there's going to be crying and weeping, when that seventh seal is broke, yes, there's a judgment that takes place, and they, a lot of them don't believe that either. But when that angel comes on ground and then he shouts his voice in the seventh thunder, other their voices. Now, I do not know what's in the seven thunders. But you couple that 
with what the bride's going to say in Revelation chapter 10. Thou must prophesy to multitude, tongues, nations, and so forth. They'll have the anointing like was not seen before the, till the days of the apostle, if you want to, or the days of Jesus. And when these go forth and prophesy, they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, but it's too late then because the seal has already been broken. So there's going to be some people that's going to fit that category. Well, is everybody that's got all this stuff here going to be involved? In like I was saying, there's time till the seven seals broke. But when the seven seal is broke, I'm sorry, that's, that's game over, if you want to. I mean, everyone knows once, once the seal is broke, that's it. So in answering to your question, that, so some look at that while well, saying, so you can't prove the, the two days. Well, yes, and the, they say Brother Jackson was wrong because he, had, he uh, picked 2004, and so he was off in his, his revelation, and, and it fell through. See, it shows that he's fault. Well, in his day, I mean, if they would see in his time when he said he felt it was... He talked to that rabbi in, in Israel, talking about, he says, do you ever thought about Hosea 6 and 2, about the two days? So he knew that the two, the two days would be 2,000 years of God's prophetic time. He, has, he knows that when that ends, the Jews is going to have the, the week of Daniel, their revival. So from his day in the 90s, he looked back in time, well, 70 AD or 69 AD, no, that, that's, that, would be too, that doesn't fit. So he looked at 33 AD. Now he's looking at it from that point. And God allowed him as being a man to, to look into things. And so when it came now, as time went on and the things he preached, as we get now to 2004 and a half, a good near the end, and some, was, some of them were more or less kneeling him, well, what are you about your 2004 and a half? He says, I'm going to leave it like that. And to me, I believe the Lord was allowing him, here's the fan for this movement. Because what's the fan does? Brother Branham said, in, well, even in some things Brother Branham said, it's as he's preaching, when he preached the sermon about the 70 weeks of Daniel, he put seven years exact. Then in another place, as he's touching certain subjects and referring back to it in his mind, He's looking at, in his mind, the two prophets. He says, well, there's three and a half years left for Israel. Yeah, for the two prophets to wake up the nation. And some took that, oh, there's dual statements here. He said, how can he be a prophet? He's being wrong. He was just being a man. But if you listen to most of his sermons, he emphatically said there's seven years left. Well, there's even some people in that movement were so carnal. And they said, well, it can't be both. Yeah, we believe both anyway. Because Brother Branham said it. And that's the other thing that, that the devil allows. The certain segment or majority of the Branham movement, everything Brother Branham said was, thus saith the Lord. And these guys just jump on that left, left, right, and center. They don't allow him to be a man. So, Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. If you read, uh, I mean, if you read, if you get familiar with the account, as he was starting out, God didn't show me every vision. Well, you watch that fellow, watch this fellow. God had certain things for him to preach at the beginning. He was to restore the things that's in the scripture that the apostle had to bring it back. And so, as this was in, because there was miracles taking place in, in his meetings, some of them might have been former KKK. Well, unless God revealed him to him, let's say a preacher says, oh, well, we're with you, and he's sitting on the platform. That may, didn't make Brother Bannon was part of the KKK. There's even claiming him to be a, a homosexual because he was go, going hunting with certain men. I mean, those that put those things out is going to really have something to answer. Touch not anointing and prophets no honor. 
I would want to be in their shoes when the day comes. Yes, Brother Gary. As much as I understand from the situation when I look at it, Brother Branham seen this in a vision, although he, where he, wherever he might have been. And he said, that cloud confirms my ministry because the cloud was reported to him. Well, well, he was there. He was there in this vision when he seen the angels. Now he equates that those clouds or that cloud formation. He said it was a confirmation of his ministry that God was going to now start bringing the seals in 1963. But he said he was caught up. Now he says it. Well, like I said earlier, he's here. He says he was in a vision. He seen himself. Uh, like when the rocks blew. Now he describes it as he's been there. Well, in the vision, if you ever had a vision, it's as if you're actually there. Okay, it's not, it's not a dream. A dream is different. But a vision, you are as, as if you were there. And so he's seen the cloud. Now in the, later on or in some places, he said, well, I seen there was five angels. Well, he's recalling from the vision that he was in. Now, it's the same thing I was trying to tell earlier. If God told me something in an earlier time, and then later on I'm trying to repeat the same things, unless I got it written down or marked down or somehow it became impressed on my mind, that later on I repeat the same things. Now, it depends what he was ministering of. When he's talking about the five angels, you have to look at what he's trying to bring out concerning the five. Then later on, he said there was seven angels there. There was one closer than the other. So he's trying to open the dream up. Now, here's, here's an, another classical example. Of, now I'm not justifying. I don't know every detail. But to me, um, if he had a vision of it, that's... Now, if he was there when, he did, when the cloud happened, that wouldn't matter. If God showed him in, in the vision what it was, to him, he's real as if he was there. Now, what I'm trying to say is this other thing. Brother Jackson had a dream about that rock where Brother Branham was open the edge and the, the truth would come, so forth. And he related that to Brother Branham. And then when Brother Branham, uh, it was after Brother Branham relates Brother Junior's dream about the rock. Well, when he did it, Later on, Brother Jackson said, well, he didn't exactly quote, he didn't exactly portray it like I did. So he's doing it from memory. Now remember, here's a prophet. That's what I'm trying to say earlier. If you've been in meetings after meeting after meeting, people bringing things back, left, right, and center, your human mind can only retain so much. So if you're relating something, you may not relate the event accurately. Now, the events is one thing, but the most important part is what is revealed concerning the word that is not a mistake. So, yes, I, I, yeah, I've looked at that too, and like I was saying, from a scientific point of view, when I'm looking at that, if a rocket was, and it did happen, let's say if it was a rocket that came from California, blew up in the air, and the wind dragged it over the mountains, and then it got to, now, it's hard to believe that it would be 30 miles wide, the vapor of a rocket. When I look at the Columbia when those people got killed, yeah, there's an explosion, I show it there. But the width of that rock is not very wide. And if, let's say in two, three days, that might expand to, expand to maybe two, three miles, not 30 miles across. And first of all, after a while, that starts to dissipate and it's, it's gone. So just to use scientific evidence of what they knew in their day, to bring a revelation, yes, they could say it's not what Brother Bram saw, it was not the angel, it was a, a, a rocket that blew up in space and the thing drifted over there and that's what they saw. Well, either which way, Brother Bram in the dream, he's, he was saying, he said that, what the people were saying, confirms my ministry, now is starting to preach the seals in 1963. God had spoken to him, there's going to come a time, he's going to have to, God's going to use him to bring the word, to bring, uh, if you want to, where the Lord will bring, if you want to, 
It is God, through an angelic being that speaks to his prophet, that opens up the seals. Now, he didn't open the seventh one. It's not time. Nobody knows when, uh, what's in that. If you want to, when the seal's broken, we don't know what's in it, because still the time it happens. And we know some details around about it, because when I'm using the picture, well, a good example is... Uh, let's see here. Now, if you think this is all easy, get all eight. Here we go. Why do you think I use charts? Because if I had to rem go from memory on everything, there's just no way. And so that's why I use certain things when I'm looking at it. So when we see the, uh, where is that fourth chapter here? Here. We seen, now that's a picture that somebody made, and I just cropped it and put some stuff in it. But when you read it in chapter four, we didn't know what those details meant as you read that fourth chapter. And so therefore, I always wonder, oh, Brother Branham, where did you get the place after the fourth seal, the bride's gone up? When you read it, it, see, it talks about the Antichrist that's projecting out to the week of Daniel and so forth in his end. It didn't say anywhere the bride going up. Where did you get that info? And is there anything in the scripture that we can look at it to, to prove, to prove, to verify that God's word? Well, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, it sees the four cherubims. They're not out in the field countering anymore the spirit of Antichrist. It had accomplished its, its purpose. And the purpose of that fourth beast, which is the eagle, was to show somebody that would believe the word of the hour. But once he got those people done, then that eagle does not have to stay there when the bride's gone. The foolish virgins, it's no sense speaking to them or anybody else. So therefore, in Revelation chapter 4, it gives you a snapshot in time. These four cherubims are home in glory. If they're in glory, the bride is also in glory as well. She's pictured around the throne. Now, it's not my revelation when it came to the point when we talked to not too long ago about who's sitting on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Again, when... Start looking at that, and then all of a sudden, I'll, sometime I'll listen to some, some Brother Bram sermon, I'll have a little pod thing, or I'll use the computer. And all of a sudden, he says, you know those 24 elders? There's 12 patriarchs on one side, and 12 apostles on the other side. I says, there was all along. Did I do? No, the Lord dropped it in, because it was time to be needed to see it. Not am I doing, but God. Then, I, then the second question was, the Lord, okay, but they have crowns. And if you don't, you know, like the Spirit, sometimes that's how it deals with, well, how come they have crowns? The seven seals not broke yet. Well, no, okay, then there's got to be something somewhere. Well, we could start showing that who's going to rule and reign with Christ in the millennium, these are the crowns for ruling and reigning because if they're sitting on each side up there in glory, when it comes a millennium, who's going to sit on left hand or right, right hand like the disciples thought it might be one of them? It was there in the scripture till the time arrived that God wants to open it. He could have used Brother Brown to do it. Well, he did in, the, in that sense, but as far as the crowns, he didn't go into that part. But as it comes time for it, the season has to be brought along enough with other scriptures that builds the picture up to that point. Then, concerning and how, well, I, I don't want to preach another sermon. Are you getting tired? All right. Oh, if you need to leave it, it's fine there too. And so, as this, I see this, this is like a snapshot. It doesn't give you every detail. So you, the Lord has to take somebody to look into the scripture and bring these things out. Now, if they're false, it'll, fall, it'll fly apart. Somebody will come and present something and bang, cut it to pieces. 
All right, so in this, we're looking at things of our day. Now, with all these things that God has allowed us to open up in this third watch, Did I lose it in this one? Uh, no. Oh, that reminds me at the same time. I want to answer a question here that might have come up in somebody's mind. Remember last time I preached concerning he'll send his angel with the great sound of a trumpet to gather them from every elect from the four corners of the world? Well, if I go into... Uh, okay, I'll have to, sh where's the Bible verse? Okay, I just put this one on and I got the one at home. Anyway, if it goes here, it talks about in the Amplified Version, it says, from the four winds, not from one end of heaven, under heaven. And then I thought at the same time, there's no four corners in the spirit world, right? If there is, the Lord would have talked about it a long time ago. So, if you have your Bible and you have the reference, how come I can't get? Oh, I don't have all the the um, the different interpretation, the not interpretation, but the different versions of the Bible, and I haven't got it in this one. But anyway, if you have a Bible and you have an Amplified, it'll clear that verse up right quick. Okay, so that's that's near there there. So when we're looking at this picture here the three groups in heaven. Brother Brown never talked about that. They could talk to one another. And it's not, oh, you got a bright idea. No. It's when I looked at when Jesus talked, I went into the center part of the earth. One group couldn't talk to the other. Okay, they're gulfs or places where souls are kept. Well, when I look at the bride, is everybody in heaven in the same place? No, they couldn't be because when you look at uh, Revelation chapter uh, 6 and 9, the souls on the altar, well, if there are, a th you know, sometimes you have to use a bit of common sense. How come the bride couldn't tell the souls on the altar before Jesus can come and tell them who the Messiah is? I mean, <laughs> but it, God had to drop that, that nugget in there. So, And the same thing like the, the uh, white robes. Why does he, have, he only preaches to them in certain things under Revelation chapter 7 in the week of Daniel? Why did he, Jesus not come to speak to the souls on the altar and those uh, white robes? Why didn't he do that during the grace age? Because he was busy on the Father's throne as being high priest. And when he's judged, he's still there. He can't leave that. But once everybody's judged concerning the bride itself, not the white robes of them, then he's free to come down right here and how beautiful those things fit. I haven't heard anything that, that contradicts it. And if there is, I want to hear. I'm not saying, hey, you're 100%, you, you had a great big flash from heaven and all that. It doesn't happen that way. Some of the things come in the middle of the night in a dream. And in the dream, you see certain things and you don't have all the details. Like the... The dream concerning uh, Jesus in the middle of the candlestick. Yeah, this one here. In the dream, yes, it, it was used to bring to my mind, and the Spirit said, what you looking at? Well, this is Jesus among the seven candlesticks. And, well, uh, this is the uh, seven church ages. Then the spirit says, then what does age mean? Well, it's, you know, like it's just like you don't want to be too smart. So I said, well, that means time. And the spirit says, that's the two days. Now, it's not because, oh, I thought about that and that it just came to mind. Sometime it comes in a dream. I didn't have every detail, but from there, other things God brought forth in time. It would be nice to say, Lord, well, if you're going to open this up, give me every detail that I need to know 
so I can preach for the next year on these things. It don't happen that way. And I'm just a simple vessel that God wants to use. I'm not the only one in this position. There's Brother Governor in his area, the, how he's bringing things that were not brought by Brother Jackson or Brother Branham. And now there's Brother Jason Bright. He's doing the, his part in his hair. And like I told both brothers, don't. If you want to touch the things I touch, you feel free, but let God speak to you about these things. And like I said, if you're using some of the charts that I use, you can manipulate it any which way that you want. It's needed for your sermon. So there's no give that way. So I'm thankful that, and I can see that they're standing up. So there's, there's more than one apostle. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Actually, yeah. Well, it's just like uh, what Brother Governor preached this morning. I would have probably went a little further, but. He says concerning uh, Jesus, well, actually, we use it here and use those texts here too. When Jesus spoke to those Pharisees, he says, Because I've spoken you the word, now he didn't say the word today, this moment, this second, but that's what we have to see. We have to see. Because I've spoken you the word, now you have no cloak to cover your sins the sin of unbelief, because that's where they would have hit it for. Because what light moves on, if we don't move on, then the fresh word that was there now becomes the letter of the word, all right? Now bringing that into our day, and actually my next sermon might bring this in in this way. Because God has revealed this third watch, and those that don't believe it that speak against it, Where's your covering when the time comes? Because they ain't gonna end up two ways going down the street. There's no way you can stand here unless God allowed, me, allowed someone to make a miracle that would flash a lightning and see an angel to confirm these things. But remember, people has to be tried. And yeah, they're gonna say, well, how do you know it's bad as it's not? Only the, it's only the bride that's going to see this. Yeah, and you can't convince. Here, yeah. If you don't believe this, yeah. You guys, the but, law, basically, or whatever, you know, yeah. You know, well, you then I have to come across them this way. Then God stopped revelation at the time of Brother Jackson. Has there been anything? Are you preaching anything? Well, those that are not following the Jackson movement, they're even further away from knowing what the things, because we're saying we're walking in truth. Now, in just like it was done in the days of Ezekiel, God told him, you warn the people. If you're a servant of God, you are to warn the people. Well, they take a warning as, well, who do you, who do you think you are? Well, they would have said the same thing to Ezekiel, and even the thing they said to Jesus, and other serv or even Brother Branham, or whatever case may be. So when you're looking at things like that, it's because it, you can't convince them their mind's made up unless God intervenes. All we can do is pray that God intervenes. Because if someone has made up their mind, they're going to see with certain things, yet they're not going to change it. The old cliche when I was young and my parents and different ones, well, the Chev is better than the Ford. No, Ford's better than the Chev. Well, it's the same approach. Unless they really look at it and they see, let's say, with, with things that are taking place, yeah, you can say one or the other. I'm just using that as an example. So in this hour, and God told, told, told him, he said, if you don't warn the people, then the blood is on your hands. But if you warn the people, then the blood is on their hands. Now, they have to hear it one way or the other. If we come say, 
you know, it would be nice if you can, if you got time, just could you read this? People, well, that'd be like water running off a duck's back. So you have to say it sometimes sharp. But if God's in them somewhere, something might have come across their way, and as they're seeing things taking place, okay, then maybe it's more serious. Like I was talking earlier, if America goes into that third, that war, that civil war, and that happens, there's a lot of people, and then they'll take a more serious look what time we're living in. And they see Israel taking all her land, and if they know about that, hey, wait a minute now, hey, we're here. Is there anything else? If there's an, ever an opportunity, I look at that as a wake-up call, number one, number two. The third one is over because the Ezekiel, the Ezekiel War, then that's when Brother Jackson, has the Lord showed him, that's when the seven seals could be broken about that time. So there's still time. But it's just like I have my own brothers. Jesus, Belzebub. We got to take the heat too. We're not going to go th through this, you know, smooth on a rocking chair. We're just going to go into this. There's going to be opposition, and Satan is not after the people of the world. He'll use that to get at the bride. And if these are things that are playing in your our minds, or let's say to try to get, yes, it is. It's hard when they they start. Well, you're in the cult. Yeah. Well, what can I do about it? Nothing. Yeah. Mark, let's say I, I have my own personal family uh, and my brother, uh, some of my brothers, they kind of look at it in the same way. Brad says, then you look, you define what, what it is. Do you, do you ever look what we're into that you can say it's a cult? Just because you're saying you're being controlled. Now, the other part before saying it's a cult, I remember some 20, 30 years ago, well, you're just listening to a man, you're, you're like the denomination, you're being de denominated. Okay, now they don't use that terminology, they use the term you're in a cult. In the book. They read it from a superficial or from the letter of the word. If they're, if they're using the Bible. The only thing, I mean, this is just my personal feelings on this here. The only thing that can really reach them is what we, well, let's say if they heard of some things that we believe in and it comes to pass, that'll speak more loudly than any try, me trying to reach them and tell them this and that and the other thing. I know it's hard to wait. And even if you go and try, now there's one of my brother-in-law, if I say anything, he, I mean, he goes ballistic. I mean, you think you got it bad here? Yeah. Yeah. Now, since he pulled out, he's been, he's been having over 35 people come to his house in the beginning. Then he got in touch with John Collins and this other guy that you see there. And they wanted him to help them. They wanted him to help them to bring a, a website to push this stuff. And he says there's over seven churches now that are aligning with them to push these things, these doctrines that they're pushing. So if Satan's in it, he's gonna make it, he's gonna make it flourish. There's nothing I can say to stop it, what not. The only thing I can do is speak to the children of God and like ourselves here, we know we're being affected. I mean, some of you may not. Uh, we, we're in the same boat as you are. And yeah, we're concerned. But I, I'm not gonna take the next plane down and start hammering on them and oh you're, you're you're going the wrong way and then like, here I can prove this and, that and the other thing, that'll only send them further. Yeah. yeah. So, in once unless God unless God gives you a word for it, that's the only thing that will do it. And unless God moves on their behalf, now the only way they can be stopped in their tracks. I'm I'm just speaking for myself. Events that either what Brother Brown or Brother Jackson said or what we said here comes on ground, that'll be like a, like a stop for them and a slap in the face for them. Hey, maybe we've got to look at this more seriously because we're talking about eternal life. 
And I know it's, yeah, uh, you know, years. I'm just going to use an example. Let's say you're talking about somebody who's 20 years old, all right? None of them, or none of them rarely ever go there and listen to a sermon for two, three hours, a Brother Brown or Brother Jackson an hour. And so therefore, they're, they're going from a superficial understanding of what they heard, and they got two sides, and none of them is revealed to them. So they're using normal intellect, saying, okay, this sounds more plausible, look, it's more real than that. So therefore, I'm gonna go down that road. And that's why, he's, that's why it's the new generation that is being affected the most, because they have not have the background. They did not check this. Uh, it's all right, do you, do you want to speak? <laughs> so that's why they go down the road. They just compare things like you would compare notes at school or comparing things from an intellectual point of view. And there's no way you can prove an intellectual point of view if there's two persons, if there's two thoughts and they're, and, the only way you can prove a thought is if, if God can come and create the events that can prove that thought, then really to them it's just, well, you're, my parents are saying this, and I believe what this, this man is telling us over here, and it's just as plausible as, as the other. So. And I guess it's pretty clear that I had, could, let's say, uh, to my daughter, I'd have to uh, go listen to Brother Branham's sermon. Don't listen with a preconceived mind and see what he says. Yeah. See if that's true, if they're willing to do that. Yeah. And with the modern world, this rush, 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 like I says, who wants to spend an hour or two hours listening to a sermon? Just to prove one point that was, that was brought up. And so that's, that's the only answer that I can give you. I'm worried, I mean, if Israelis have been hampered on every side and we're spiritually walking with the Lord, well, the devil is not just going to stay out there in the denomination, and we're not going to shut your in-laws or anything within your movement. He's right. That's where he wants to work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's healthy. It's just a flash that sort of came. The best thing you can, not the best thing you can do, but let's say, okay, you're saying these statements are contradictory. I say, uh, do you remember 10, 20 years ago, you, something happened, you related? Can you relate that to me today? Oh, wait a minute, you didn't exactly said it like you said it there. Does that make you something false? I mean, you can use that as an example. I, now, don't use that to fire them up. <laughs> but, I mean, that's one way that could be brought in one sense. So you take an event that you knew that took place in their past, and, and they tell you this is what had happened, and say, well, tell me uh, again. And then, you, and then if you know the actual event, if you want to, as well, well, uh, you didn't quite quote the same thing. So what does that make you? A person that can be fallible. Even a prophet or apostle, men are fallible. The only one that's not fallible was the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's, I mean, I'm, I just, it came out of the air. Um, yeah. That they could, and when I was following your, your brother, Brother Allen, because uh, it was, well, I was just beginning, so. And so he would talk about that he was going to have a ministry go out west and so forth, and that thing was going to start there. So, I, I mean, we were like two peas in the fire for a while. But anyway, Franklin Walden came down, and he preached a sermon there, and, oh, it was fine. I mean, I mean, Brother Jim had allowed him to come in, whatever the case may be, so. And there's no inference that way. Um, so anyway... After the service, we're in the cloakroom. And so Franklin Walden turns to Alan and says, you're going out west and you're gonna start your ministry. I said, whoa, how did he know that? Well, okay, well, to me, well, how? Yes, God might have spoke to him, but when he did go west, he had to come back and it was not of God. Um, there's other things that God will bring things in your life at the, see, we have to be tested. These things come on as, Lord, take this away, take this away, help. Well, are you willing to stand for what you got? 
but there'll come a day, a time, he'll bring something to you. He'll bring something across your way to, to bring it, make it just right, so. <sighs> yeah, this is, you know, talk about Brother Branham now, <laughs> speaking that length of time. I know we're not preaching here, and, I'll, and I said this is an open forum, so that's, that's all I'm saying here. So, but Charles had, had mentioned to me had, uh, that summer when he came down that he felt the Lord was calling him to a ministry. And so it didn't go long after that. Brother Allen tells Charles, I believe you have a ministry, so he wanted him to be an assistant pastor. So that was sort of like confirmed to him. Well, how long did that go till? So, and the ministry he's in now, it's definitely not the right kind of place to be, so. Yes. Now, don't discount it, because I know that your daughter knows about the miracle war, or heard of it, and those things there. So, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself. When those events takes place, that'll hit harder than any word that we can talk to them. And uh, I just pray that God be merciful. I mean, God can do a quick work. He don't, you don't have to learn the message 10 years, what's going on. So, All right, I'm getting a little... I remember, I'm 75, getting tired now. And, I mean, if I make mistakes, just take it to the, to the Lord. I mean, I'm just human too. Didn't go to no Bible school, and sometimes... That's why in the early days when Brother Jim says, uh, well, do you mind maybe being assistant pastor? I says, no, because I've seen the troubles that was happening in the world. Even when I was doing the Bible studies, no. Well, when he said the second, after he had the second heart attack, well, he says, you're going to leave the people without. Well, I says, well, if that happened. Not that I wanted him to have a heart attack either. And so then I start here the first sermon. This is not a Bible study. It's different. So I asked Brother Ray to, for a hand because I couldn't handle it. I mean, I didn't. But I mean, I'm surprised the thing that God has on. When it's there, it's, it's so clear when God opens up truth. And the only thing I can do is share a thing that the Lord has allowed me to see. If, I'm, if I say something wrong or someone else, hey, fine. And if, if I am really in error, then Lord, raise somebody to say the truth. Because I want to hear the truth. Amen. That's why I get up early on, on Sunday morning and listen to Brother Brother Governor, and then this afternoon I missed him, but he is Brother Jason Bright at 2 o'clock, 2.30. I, I need to be fed too, hey. It's a two-way street. All right, it's, it's, it's okay. Do you have enough? Is that enough for today? Or I think I don't have to go through every detail. You can read it for yourself and do your searches. But that's basically what uh, I want to maybe bring across so everybody is in on the same page here about where we're at. It doesn't remove the trials, but let's, all we can do is pray. So, All right, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord. I just pray that things were done, Lord, according to your wills. We're asking it now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, each one.